There it is! We're home, boys! Yeah! We're home! Oh, hey, put me down! Oh. Hey, boys, it's Spain! We've done it! We're home! I knew we'd make it! <laughs> oh, dear Lord, thank you for bringing us safely back home again. <laughs> March 15th, 1493. After a voyage of 225 days, we have returned to Palos. I have proved that my theory was right. The Indies can be reached by sailing west across the ocean. ships on the horizon. No, sir, nothing but water out there. Water and wreckage. I wonder what broke her up. Must have been a storm. A storm or else a sea monster. <laughs> well, whatever it was, it proves that these waters are dangerous. October 8th, 1492. Our last port of call, the island of Gomera, is 20 days behind us, and there is still no sign of land. Our charts of this part of the ocean are as blank as empty air. Be my supper, did you? Come here, you little rascal. Well, you never fail to cheer me up. <laughs> Captain, the Pinta has sent up a signal and is approaching. Why? What is the news, Captain Pinzon? <laughs> we've done it, Captain Columbus! Done what? Land, Captain! We've spotted land! See for yourself! Mm -hmm. oh. What did 
I tell you? Thank you all for your valiant work. You'll change course and head for land. But though we continued to sail on into the night, we failed to reach the land we'd sighted. The sun's coming up and still no land in sight. Or maybe we really didn't spy land at all. Hmm. Well, if you ask me, we probably saw nothing but clouds. But according to my calculations, we should be upon it by now. And if what we saw yesterday was nothing but an illusion? That was no illusion, Martin. My calculations are correct. Then perhaps we sailed right past the land in the course of the night. I've had it. We're being played for fools. I say we turn back. And so say I. There's no land here. We're risking our lives here like idiots and for nothing. To the captain's quarters! Forward! I'm afraid we're soon going to have a mutiny on our hands, Commander. The men can no longer be reasoned with. It looks bad. Desperate measures may be needed. I know. Captain, show yourself! There they are, and it's the same old troublemakers. You there! What is your quarrel with the captain? We want to return to Spain immediately! That's right! That's so? <gasps> I want everyone to listen to me! It's listening to you that got us into this mess! Yeah. Turn this ship home or we will! Silence, Furman! He's right! We're wasting our time! There's no land here! Do you want all your work till now to go for naught? We may be on the very threshold of discovery. Who cares? I have the authority of the law of the sea, but I'm prepared to make a deal with you. Three more days. I solemnly promise, as God is my witness, that if three days and nights pass and there is still no land, that on the morning following the third night, we will... You will have what you've been clamoring for. We will turn around and head for home. Any objections? We have your word? You have it. Then we accept. All right, men. You will go about your duties on board with diligence and goodwill for three more days. And with the Lord's help, we shall land in the Indies to find gold and glory. Oh, yes. Yes. Lord, I am in desperate straits. Please don't make it necessary to turn back. Please, show us land. If you mean us to find the Indies, now is the time. Captain, she's signaling. I can't see a thing in this darkness. Tell me where you spied the land. Two points off the port bow. You can see it when the moon comes out from the clouds. We were right, Captain. It was over there we saw the fire. 
How very fitting that it was you, Captain, who saw it first. It was the will of God. All hands will ride here at anchor. We go ashore as soon as the sun rises. Such beauty, I can't believe my eyes. Paradise. <laughs> Thank you, dear Lord, for leading us over vast and perilous seas to this safe harbor. Our gratitude knows no bounds. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. All right, we now claim this land for Spain! <laughs> <laughs> Notary, come forward. Your Royal Highness Queen Isabella and your Royal Highness King Ferdinand. We have accomplished the glorious mission with which you in your great wisdom entrusted us. And we hereby take possession of this land which we shall call San Salvador in your majesty's names on October 11th, Anno Domini 1492. Signed Don Christopher Columbus, Admiral of the Ocean Sea, Viceroy and Governor General as appointed by the King and Queen. Such a glorious, historic day. Thanks to you, Martin, and you, Vincente. I'd never have done it without you. Congratulations, Admiral. You have brought honor to Spain and covered yourself with glory. Thank you. Christopher, accept my congratulations, too. Yeah. 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 We apologize for doubting you. Now we see that you are right all the time, Captain. That will do, men. This is no time for recrimination, but for forgiveness. <laughs> Forgiveness, and thanks to the merciful Lord, our Savior, who has brought us here to San Salvador. Yes, Sanchez, San Salvador, because it was here our expedition was saved. Notary, write that down. This land is to be called San Salvador. San Salvador? Someone's coming! <gasps> Look! Calm down. He's not armed and he's alone. What can he do? Torres, come here and try to talk to him. Try Hebrew. Anachnu bo mi España. We come in peace. We mean you no harm. Anachnu bo be shalom. Anachnu bo be Shalom, Bobich, Shalom. Shalom. Huh? He doesn't understand. He's just mimicking. You, present the goods for trading. Here, you like this? Huh? Hmm. 
Huh? It's a hat. Like this. Ha 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 <laughs> this is a cloak. I need it because it gets cold at sea. Hey, careful! Her Majesty the Queen gave me that. Ah, uh, Queen? <laughs> Someone, see to this man's hand. Hurry! Is it possible they've never seen a sword before? We should be able to conquer these fellows in our sleep. We have not come here to conquer anyone by force. They need instead to be liberated from ignorance through love, the love of our Lord. San Salvador! This island of San Salvador is possessed of a luxuriant beauty. The trees are as green as May in Castilla. The natives are as gentle as children, and we are gradually establishing a trusting friendship with them. But as yet, we have no evidence as to whether or not this is Chapangu. The next morning, we visited their village on the other side of the island. Sorry, that's it. All gone. They're giving us nothing but cotton in return. You call this fair? It's valuable just to know that they grow cotton here. Didn't Marco Polo write that in Chapangu even the roofs and walls of houses were made of gold? Well then, I suggest we start looking for some of that gold as we promised the king and queen. Yes, I know. All in good time. Captain, take a look at this nose ring. That's a gold hoop. But where does it come from? There's a large island to the west of this one. The natives say they have seen even bigger gold bracelets and anklets over there. What are we waiting for? Let's go! I'll lead the way. It took so long to find that first island. And now look, islands as far as the eye can see. Who can say how many there are? If we could understand each other, you could tell us. Uh -huh. I suspect even they don't know. Perhaps. Our explorations had truly only just begun. I named the next island Santa Maria de la Concepcion. <laughs> it doesn't matter where we go. Everyone talks about gold, but we never see any. Don't be so impatient, Martin. I'm not the one who's impatient. It's the sailors on the Pinta. They're saying they want to split with you and go off in search of gold on their own. And I can't stop them. Look, Martin. <clears throat> According to the natives, there's a big island called Cuba at some distance west of here. You think that's Chipangu? We don't know yet. We were just making plans to set out for there to see. That's good news. That ought to make the men on the Pinta happy. Just see to it that we head for Cuba before it's too late. I had already foreseen that Martin Alonso Pinzon and his men would oppose me and go off on their own in search of gold. And it wasn't long before my suspicions were confirmed. More than a hundred days have passed since we left the port of Palos. We have discovered many islands, including a large one called Cuba, but despite all our efforts, we have found no gold. The inhabitants are friendly, but don't seem to know nor care about such things as gold. We are continuing our explorations, but the men grow restless. With the scent of gold in the air, I'm not sure I can rely on their loyalty. We have come a long way since leaving Spain, 
The Indies or Chapangu can't be far off. Admiral Columbus! Huh? Admiral Columbus! There's trouble. The Pinta's disappeared completely. She's just vanished. What? Disappeared? She just sailed off on her own. You see? She was right there. It's Martin Pinzon. He must have gotten more information from the natives about gold and gone off on his own to find it, Admiral. Admiral! <gasps> I see her! The Pinta! She's off to starboard! Aha! Look! The Pinta! She's leaving us! Yes! Sir, we've got to catch them and punish Martin Pinzon for this outrage. We could never catch the Pinta with this old ship if we tried. It's too slow. But, sir, Pinzon will probably have second thoughts and come back, Gutierrez. We'd better keep a signal fire lit at night so that he can find us. That's all. Today we added another island to the king and queen's new territories and named it Hispaniola, in honor of Spain. It's very beautiful. Oh, look, sir. There are natives. Yes. Torres, go ashore and use those men as interpreters. Try to talk to the natives. Aye, aye, Admiral. And take along plenty of gifts. Of course, Admiral. Oh, be careful! Good luck. Think they'll speak the same language? I hope so. In any event, Torres has managed to teach some Spanish to the natives we have with us, so they'll be able to tell us whether there are any sources of gold in this land. That must be their leader, sir. That's right. Perhaps we can learn something from him. Gutierrez, have a banquet prepared. Yes, Admiral. Admiral, they understood us. We brought back their cacique. Their cacique? That's what they call their king, sir. I told them we're from Spain. And that we've got a king and a queen, but I don't think they caught what I meant. According to our natives, they think that we fell out of the sky somehow. I can't change their minds. That we fell out of the sky? You're joking, aren't you? No, I'm not. In fact, I think it was our natives that gave them the idea, if I'm interpreting their gestures correctly. Huh? Uh, welcome, Cacique. In the name of the King and Queen of Spain, I'm Admiral Christopher Columbus. Mm. Uh, would you like, um... Would you care to try some of our food? Food from Spain? Oh. Oh. Mm. 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 
Now, if you'll follow me, Kasik, we have a gift for you. Oh, yeah. Huh? Um, allow me to present this tassel. Why, thank you. I'm honored. Please take this in return. <laughs> Torres, I think they want to leave now. Take them back to the island, please. Of course, Admiral. Admiral, We've learned through our interpreters that there is a more powerful cacique on this island than the young one we met today. His name is Guacanagari. Guacanagari? Yes, apparently he's much wealthier than the young cacique is, Captain. There's more gold on the part of the island under his control, and he'd welcome us as well. Mm. Even so, these natives seem far from overloaded with gold ornament. I doubt there's much gold here at all, frankly. And even if there were, we're nearly out of beads and trinkets to trade with them in exchange for gold. Sanchez is right. Torres, why waste more time here when your natives know of another place nearby that has more gold than soil? Will we have to cross open ocean to get there? I believe this island is that place. They were speaking of Guacanagari's territory here. My natives tell me it's called the Chibao. Chibao, eh? Chibao sounds a lot like Chipango. Yes, Chipangu, the country rich in gold in the Indies. This could be the same country, sir. <sighs> Captain, I say we sail for the Chibao at once, sir. Our men have but one thought, to search for gold and go home wealthy. If we refuse, I'm not sure we could control them. Fine, we'll pay this Guacanagari a visit and see if these stories of gold are true once and for all. I just hope we can plot a safe course from here. <sighs> Hmm. We have set a course for the Chibao. It's not far, but we must proceed with great caution. The current is strong, and there are many treacherous reefs in these waters. I've assigned only the most experienced men to the key posts. The crew is exhausted, but we can't drop anchor until we're sure it's safe. Come here. Yes, what is it? What do you want? Ugh, oh, I can hardly stand up. Take the rudder just for a moment, will you? No! Oh, don't worry, nothing will happen. Just do as I say. Come on now. Oh. There. Now just move the rudder gently so the pole star stays right where it is. Understand? Well, I catch a quick nap. <laughs> Oh, no! Uh, uh, 
To your stations! We've hit a reef! Look lively! No. Oh. 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 Huh? Drop anchor! Lower a boat fast! Let's go! Koza, oh. 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 haul on the line holding the anchor and try to pull us off the reef! No, row for the Nina, quick! Oh. Koza, where are you going? Come back! Koza, come back here! Oh. Oh. Citizen the ballast, throw anything we don't need overboard! She's going down! That's it! Get it all overboard! She's tipping over! is pulling us over. Cut it down! Captain Vincente, over here. We're in trouble. The ship's breaking up. Yes, you've done all you can. You've got to get your men on board the Nina. Abandoned ship? Yes, sir. You have no choice. The tide's against you. The ship could overturn. With any luck, it'll stay on the reef, but you're gambling with lives here. All right. Give the order. Abandoned ship! Abandoned ship, men! Get to the Nina however you can! Abandoned ship! Over the side! Hurry! I'm sorry, Captain. Don't worry. I know it wasn't your fault, but hurry, over the side. I won't go until I know you're all safe. Yes, sir. Gotcha, sir! Go! Get away from her in case she tips! One good thing, she's stuck on the reef. If she's still there at dawn, we'll try to get her cargo ashore, as much as we can manage. Thank heavens we're not far from land. But, Captain, it'll take much too long. We only have a few small boats for that. True, but we'll ask Guacanagari for help, since he's friendly. Friendly or not, how can he help, sir? These natives are primitive. They have their dugouts. They'd be fine for the job. We could just borrow them if we have to. Huh? Mm -hmm. All right now, Gutierrez, go ashore with Harana, Torres, and the interpreters. Ask the natives to help us move the cargo. We're on our way, Captain. Sanchez, we're back! <laughs> Admiral, Torres is back and he has company, sir. Really? Look at them all. Your idea looks like it's going to work. Admiral, Guacanagar, he cooperated. He sent every man he could spare to help us unload the Santa Maria. He seems very friendly indeed, sir. Vincente, lower a boat, and I'll go aboard the Santa Maria and supervise the unloading and dismantling operation from there. Right away, Captain. Lower a boat, sailors! We start unloading the Santa Maria at once!
Wakanagari has put these three huts at our disposal. They'll accommodate us all in comfort, sir. Huts as well. His generosity is welcome indeed. Hmm? What is that? They call it a hammock, sir. You sleep in it. We're told they're very comfortable. A hammock? Huh. For primitive natives, these people seem very civilized to me. I hope the men will be wise enough to treat them well. Hmm. <laughs> Look at this hat full of gold for some measly beads. We really will strike it rich here in the Indies. Isn't it beautiful? Mm -hmm. It is, but Columbus gave us strict orders not to take any gold from the natives. If you're caught with that, he's not gonna be happy. So I won't be caught with it. You're not going to tell him, are you? And you can bet that I won't. Anyway, they can spare it. It looks like there's tons of gold here. <laughs> Dress uniform. You must think highly of this Guacanagari. You could greet royalty in that. Well, Guacanagari is royalty to his people, and he's treated us like kings. Excuse me, Guacanagari has arrived, Admiral. Already? Welcome aboard, sir. Admiral Christopher Columbus at your service. Torres, umbumblab, umbumpi, balumpab. Uh, he says he's sorry about your ship and will help however he can. I'm new at this, but I think I've got it right, sir. Thank him from the bottom of my heart. Please, a token of my gratitude. Here. Mm. Let me help you put it on. Oh. <laughs> now the gloves are next. He thanks you and asks if you'd like to join him for a meal, sir. Tell him I'd be honored to dine with him, Torres. <laughs> Ah, our cannon interests him. Tell His Highness we'll demonstrate it for him. Harana, fire it at what's left of the ship. Be glad to, Captain. I'm sorry if we scared anyone, but as you see, with a weapon like that, you have less to fear from your enemies. Hey, Mani, se lo odiao. But, Admiral, why do you want to go back to Spain now, if you don't mind my asking? Now we know there's gold here, even if we don't know how much. But we're sailors, not miners. We need to bring engineers, carpenters, and materials from home. But mostly, we need ships. We can't all search for gold on just the Nina. But can we all return on her, sir? No, but I want half of us to stay on here and establish a colony. We'll use the wood from the Santa Maria to build a fort and equip it with the cannon. When we return, we'll bring what we need to make it our base of operations. Admiral, I'd like to be among those who remain. We know there's gold here now, and I'm not going back till I get my hands on some. I'll stay on here too, Captain, to maintain discipline. Very well. I'm sure we'll find enough volunteers among the men to set up a secure colony. We'll start construction on the fort tomorrow. Javier, ayúdame. Ven aquí. Come eso. Cuidado por aquí. Once the fort is completed, only one important task will remain. To find the Pinta and Martin Pinzon, so he can accompany us back to Spain. And 
when that's Harana. done, we'll... If our return voyage to Spain is as smooth as our westward crossing, then I can assure you I will return with reinforcements in good time, Harana. And you, in the meantime, will take charge of the Fort of Navidad in my place. You're in command, Harana. I understand, Admiral. And as Chief Guard appointed by their Majesties, the King and Queen, I promise to fulfill my duties to the very best of my ability. And you, Gutierrez, and you also, Escobedo, I'm entrusting you in my absence with the safeguarding of these newly claimed lands. Don't fail me. I trust that there will be no mistakes. Have faith, Admiral. When you next set foot on this island, you will see all these barrels filled to overflowing with gold. And that's a promise, sir. Admiral, I implore you to impress upon their majesties just how much we've managed to accomplish here. Mm-hmm. Well, I hate to admit it, but I've developed a soft spot for the Admiral. I'll miss you, my friend, but I've decided to go with him on this voyage. <laughs> I think you're crazy, but I'm sure you'll return, and when you do, there'll be a barrel of gold waiting for you. You'll see. Admiral! Huh? We've just had news of Captain Pinzon. Really? <sighs> Tell me, Torres, what is it? Well, apparently, one of Guacanagari's subjects saw the Pinta leave an inlet to the east. I believe it was two days ago. Perhaps he set sail for Spain, hoping that if he arrives there before we do, he can claim the discovery of Chipango for himself. Sounds like Pinzon to me. Yes, and if we want to catch him, we must leave as soon as possible. On January the 4th, 1493, we departed from the island of Hispaniola. Admiral, huh? I must express my opinion of this matter of Captain Pinzon. For 40 days since November 21st of last year, he's been acting entirely of his own volition. I believe this is a major infringement of protocol, and that it must be severely dealt with. I understand you, Sanchez, but Martin must have a chance to explain himself. Good news, Admiral Columbus. We've spotted the Pinta. Where huh? is she? There she is. Off the starboard bow. And I'd say she's headed straight for us, Senor Sanchez. So they're not running away. We'll hold a steady course. Vincente, send out a boat and inform Captain Pinzon we desire him to come aboard. Excellent, Admiral. I'm anxious to know that my brother is safe. Admiral! Uh, I've just heard that the Santa Maria has been wrecked on a reef. Is this true? You've got a nerve talking about reefs? What have you got to say for yourself for willfully disobeying orders? Nothing because no orders were disobeyed, willfully or unwillfully. What does that mean? The Pinta too was a victim of mischance. The current was strong, as you know. Our anchor cable broke, we were pulled away by the current, and dry as we might, we could not turn back. A very convincing explanation, Martin. Huh? But it still puzzles me as to how you managed to find all that gold. Oh, this? Why, this is nothing, Admiral. These are only baubles. My men have much more than this, as you'll see. Glad to hear it, but I still demand to know how you justify disobeying orders and acting on your own as you did. I heartily regret that things turned out the way they did, but you must understand one thing. I certainly was not acting in my own interests for my own profit. It was essential that we find gold in order to fulfill our promise to the King and Queen, and I promised my men as well that I would send each and every one of them home with untold wealth. How could I let them down after all they've done for me? 
And finally, I believe that finding gold would ensure the success of our enterprise, Admiral. It was wise of you to make up such noble-sounding excuses, Martin. You've almost convinced me. We shall explain it thus in Spain. But from now on, you are under my command. Under no circumstances will you take any independent action. Raise the royal ensign! She's returned. Hi, everyone. I have good news. The good ship Nina's back in Palos Harbor. Oh, my friends, we're home. And what a voice we have. <laughs> the Nina's returned. The Nina. Boy, that's one of Captain Columbus's ships. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. The Lord brought you safely home. <laughs> <laughs> After all, my dad was commanding the fleet. <laughs> it's good to be in Spain again. <laughs> hey! <laughs> but where are the Pinta and the Santa Maria? <laughs> the Santa Maria was my father's ship. Why isn't he here as well? Oh. Mm. <laughs> Ships, weren't there? My Pedro was aboard the Santa Maria. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm sure your husband's fine. This is a great day, a day for celebrating. <laughs> celebrating? How can I celebrate without my beloved Pedro? <laughs> <laughs> Columbus is going ashore. Admiral Columbus. Oh. Oh. safely, son, just as I promised I would. Did you really make it to the Indies? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I always knew you would. <laughs> yes, I was very lucky, son. Father Perez. <laughs> Congratulations, Christopher. Thank you very much, Father. I couldn't have done it without your help. Oh, no. It was the Lord who helped you, Christopher. O Lord, in thy infinite mercy, thou hast granted the sailors of the Nina a safe return from their perilous journey. Let their brave deeds glorify thy name, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. World. There's a storm on the way. Huh? How can you say that? I've never seen the western sky look so lovely. Wow, 
You were right, sir. Of course. Lightning in the western sky can only mean one thing, bad weather. It's a storm warning that never fails. Men, all hands, prepare for a storm! Keep the stern light burning so she can still see us. When the storm's over, we'll find her. Pray that we all survive. Help, somebody! What? Admiral, there's water in the hold. Then get down there and start bailing. Aye, aye. <laughs> If we manage to prevent the Nina from sinking, it will be thanks to the mercy of the Blessed Virgin. And in the event of our safe return, one of us must make a pilgrimage to the Church of Our Lady in Guadalupe. We shall draw lots for the honor. He who takes the chickpea marked with the cross will be the one chosen to make this difficult pilgrimage. Here it is. It appears that Our Lady has bestowed this difficult honor on me. Ha! <laughs> I'm sure this is a sign she will guide us through the storm. My greatest concern was should we all sink to the bottom of the sea, all record of my expedition would be lost. And so I made two sets of records. I sealed them tightly with wax and packed them into two barrels. I threw one of the barrels into the sea and lashed the other one to the quarterdeck so that should the Nina be destroyed, it would still float amongst the wreckage. And thus, even if we should all perish in the storm, the records of my voyage would be preserved for future generations. Yet I knew that the odds of them reaching anyone unharmed were even less than those of finding Chipango in the midst of a boundless ocean. It's very strange. We should have had news of the Pinta by now. It hasn't been sighted anywhere along the local coastline. That is strange, Father. I was sure the Pinta would already be here. 
While I was in Portugal, I heard it had landed in the northern Spanish port of Bayona. I hope that the crew is all right. Yes, so do I. Admiral Columbus! Huh? The Pinta is here! She just entered the harbor! At last. Let's go greet Captain Pinzon. Is that really the Pinta? No, it can't be! Admiral. Thank you, Seaman. Where's Captain Pinzon? Over there, sir. Let me through. Huh? What is it? Captain Pinzon! What on earth has happened to him? My dear brother caught a fever while we were fighting the storm. I begged him to go below decks and rest. But he refused, and the fever grew steadily worse. Now I fear he may no longer have the strength he needs to recover. He should be carefully carried ashore and taken immediately up the hill to Larabida. The monks there will take good care of him. Mm -hmm. The Admiral's right. Tragic. Such a young man and his life is ebbing away. Let us say a prayer for Captain Pinzon. Excuse me, sir. The royal court is in Barcelona, and their majesties are expecting your report. You must set out for Barcelona right away. Fine. Martin, my friend. I'm going to see the king and queen and tell them of our voyage to the Indies. You must get better soon. Their majesties will want to hear from you, too. No, my story won't be told. These are my last moments, Admiral. Don't say that. You will get better. That's right. You mustn't give up. I... I... Yes? I want you to give this to Her Majesty Queen Isabella. Hmm. <laughs> Captain Pinzon. Martin! Martin! Can you hear me? <sighs> I think he's gone. <laughs> Most royal sovereigns, I come before you today to report on my successful expedition to the Indies. Hmm? Admiral, please sit before us. Thank you, Your Majesty. <laughs> Admiral Columbus. We congratulate you. The success of your expedition gratifies us most highly. The fact that you had to struggle for many years before finally securing the permission you needed to cross the ocean only adds luster to your great triumph. Thank you for those kind words, Your Majesty. I have more than kind words to offer you today, Admiral. The King and I have decided that we will sponsor a second expedition to the Indies. 
Can we count on you to be its commander? It would be an honor, Your Majesty. As you are undoubtedly aware, the King of Portugal is also sponsoring voyages to the Orient, but he has opted for the eastern route around Africa. A race is on between his country and ours. You must win that race and claim the heathen lands of Asia for Spain. Are you confident in your ability to do what we ask? Yes, I know I'll succeed. Uh, Admiral? Yes? What's the fastest way to Asia? Uh, well... Go on, Admiral. Tell her. <laughs> All right. The fastest way to Asia is to head west. Just like the sun up in the sky. Think you can remember that? Mm-hmm. Next time you go there, I'll go too. Huh? <laughs> 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 Sailing on the uncharted ocean takes great courage. Oh, believe me, I know. Is it true that the heathen all live in shameless nakedness? There's money to be made in the Indies. Big money. Gold, silk, spices, all there for the picking. Yes. <laughs> oh, Admiral, it's such an honor to meet you. <laughs> An honor? Huh? Oh, come now. What honor is there in meeting a common sailor? And a foreigner to boot. You're lucky to be here, Columbus. To whom have I the pleasure of speaking, if I may ask? I am Don Emilio Figueras, and I say this voyage to the Indies was no great feat. Why, huh? of all the... Huh? <laughs> Anyone could have done what you did. We all know the world's round, and if you sail west, you'll reach Asia. I'm no sailor, but I could have told their majesties that. So could I. So could my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Don Emilio, I have a little test for you. A test? Yes, it's quite easy. I'd like you to take a boiled egg and stand it on its end. Do you think you can do that? Hmm? On its end? Why, um, certainly any idiot can do that. Do it. Mm-hmm. Huh? Uh, let me try again. Uh, I'll get it this time. Hmm? This is harder than it looks. Oh, let me try that. It can't be done. This is a trick by the Admiral. <laughs> Don't tell me you can't do it. Of course we can't. It's impossible. I'm certain that you can't do it either. <laughs> yes, I can do it. <laughs> well, come on, we're waiting. Oh. Huh? Now observe. See, the egg is standing on its end. Hmm? That's not fair! If you crack the egg's shell like that, it's child's play to stand it on its end. Exactly. The solution to a problem always seems simple once someone has pointed it out. That's as true for an egg as it is for the Indies. <laughs> You certainly proved your point, Admiral. <laughs> well done, Admiral Columbus. Well done. This country needs more good men like you. <laughs> Did you see the way he put that hot on Don Emilio in his place? Oh, it was priceless. I must not give in to my weariness. I'm almost there. I have sworn to make this pilgrimage to the Church of Our Lady of Guadalupe in gratitude for the Nina's deliverance from that storm. On September 25th, 1493, the second expedition to the Indies set out. Under my command were 17 ships and 1,500 men. The crowd that assembled for our send-off was huge and enthusiastic. <laughs> on Sunday, November 3rd, we made our first landfall on an island that I named Dominica. From there, we sailed to an island I named Guadalupe after the church where I made my pilgrimage. Then it was on to Hispaniola, 
where 39 men from our first voyage had stayed behind and founded the settlement of Navidad. But where the settlement had stood, we found charred ruins and the signs of a pitched battle. The men of Navidad, driven by greed and arrogance, had abused the island's inhabitants in their quest for gold. The angry inhabitants finally attacked Navidad and killed every one of the 39 men who had built it, including my friend Diego de Herana. Under my command, the men of the second expedition built a new settlement on Hispaniola at a site named Isabella after Spain's queen. As the island's governor, I was beset by complaints and problems. Administrative work bored and confused me, so I set out on a new voyage of exploration. I found a large land mass known to the natives as Cuba, as well as numerous smaller islands which I explored and charted. But my dream of finding the treasure-laden cities of India and Cathay continued to elude me. The territories I found were empty of cities, and even worse, nearly empty of gold. I returned to Spain to report on my findings, but the king and queen were bitterly disappointed. They had hoped for gold and treasure with which to restore Spain's wealth, and my stories of the virgin jungles I had found only frustrated them. On May 30th, 1498, I led a third expedition westward across the ocean. When I arrived in Hispaniola, I found that rebellion had broken out in the settlement of Navidad. My efforts to restore order only seemed to fan the flames of resentment until a royal envoy named Francisco de Babadilla arrested me and returned me to Spain in irons, stripped of my titles and my dignity. Only after weeks of written entreaties did I obtain an audience with the Queen and the restoration of my titles. My fourth and final expedition began on May 9th, 1502, but bad weather and misfortune dogged the voyage from beginning to end. On November 7, 1504, I arrived back in Spain. My hope of finding the fabled wealth of the Indies seemed as distant as ever. At the end of that year, Queen Isabella, my greatest patroness, left this world. Now, less than two years later, many scholars and seafarers are suggesting that the lush, wild lands I discovered are not the Indies at all, but rather part of a vast continent previously unknown to the geographers of Europe. They call this continent the New World. Now, on May 20th, 1506, my life draws to a close. What fame I might once have enjoyed has long since been eclipsed by names like de Gama and Vespucci, and in the final hours of my life, only a few relatives are on hand to mark my passing. I commend my soul into the hands of the Lord. a lesson to draw from my life, it is surely that the human spirit reaches its highest expression when it is imaginative and resourceful, when in the face of adversity and discouragement the soul does not waver nor the will relent in the determined pursuit of a dream.